Over the last couple decades, the landscape of the NHL has been drastically changing. At the start of the 90s, the NHL was made up of nearly 75% Canadians. 10 years later, that number fell to 57%, and today it is roughly at 42%. Which means over the span of the last couple decades, the amount of Canadians has decreased by over 30%. And you may ask, why? Well, to be honest, it's pretty simple. As the game grows, so does interest around the world. And as international programs continue to develop and get better, the amount of overseas players is only going to increase. And to give you some perspective, here's the growth of Sweden's presence in the NHL. Back in the 90s, they only made up roughly 2% of the entire league. But today, it is approximately at 12%, or a 600% increase. And Canada and the States will always have a major presence in hockey. But this continued international growth is only a positive thing for the future of the NHL as it inspires a new generation of overseas stars. And sometimes from that talent, we see child prodigies. Players that from a young age stick out so much, their entire nation rallies behind them. With the first selection, 2004 NHL entry draft, Washington Capitals are pleased to select Alexander Ovechkin. Sure, you're just the second Russian-born player to go first overall. Ilya Kovalchuk, of course, was the first. That must make you very proud. Yeah, I'm very proud of this. Um, I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy. 16 years ago, the NHL would be blessed with who is perhaps the greatest pure goal scorer in NHL history. But that is not who we're talking about today. Matt Bay Mishkov. If you haven't heard the name yet, trust me, you will in the future. Because at the age of 15, Mishkov has been displaying the talent of the next generational superstar from Russia. And I mean, his gameplay speaks for itself. Mishkov is an elite goal scorer with some of the filthiest mitts I've ever seen. And to give you some perspective, around the same age, the IIHF reported that Ovechkin had 59 goals and U14. Mishkov, as an underager, put up 70 goals in 26 U16 games. And if you are familiar with how Russian hockey programs work, the KHL is the Russian equivalent to the NHL. The VHL is the AHL. And the MHL is like the CHL, WHL, QMJHL, OHL, USHL. And as a 15 year old, Mitchkov would put up an incredible 17 goals in 24 games as an underager, playing against competition who were up towards five years older. But the thing is, Matt Bay only turned 16 a couple weeks ago. He is not draft eligible for three years. And in the 2023 draft also lies Connor Bedard, the first WHL exceptional status player in league history. So as hockey fans, it's going to be fascinating watching these two players battle it out for years to come. In the 2019-2020 season, there was the same amount of players from the Down Under, Australia, than there was from Norway. Can you guess the number? Well, it's, it's one. Nathan Walker, who played five games for the St. Louis Blues, and from Norway, Mats Zuccarello. And considering that Norway is literally connected to Sweden and Finland, countries that have become hockey powerhouses I was honestly very surprised to come across this stat. So as you can imagine, if a country all of a sudden breeds a potential phenom in an untraditional sport, it's a big deal. And that player is Matthias Emilio Pedersen. Growing up in the Norwegian hockey system, Matthias was so unbelievably dominant, he'd have to play up in leagues where competition was sometimes 3-5 to five years older than himself. And he'd still dominate. As a 13 year old in a U16 league, Matisse would put up 70 points in 20 games. He was so far ahead of his age class, he quite literally reached his ceiling. And so as a 14 year old, he would be recruited to the United States Premier Hockey League, where he would have to uproot his entire life to pursue hockey. And overall, Matisse would transition extremely well. He would put up very respectable numbers in U16, developed really well in the USHL, and miraculously would be drafted in the 6th round in the 2018 NHL Draft by the Calgary Flames. But the story doesn't stop there. Matthias would join the University of Denver the next season, and his production would explode. Peterson scrambles to it, and he scores! 
30 points as a rookie, 35 points the next season, and coming from very hopeful and humble beginnings, Matias may just end up being a great NHL player. When it comes to claiming players as the next prodigy, the next great one, it tends to be a lot easier to identify forwards. Hmm, I wonder which one is the child prodigy. Uh, that one, I, I, I think. Defensive prodigies run into an issue. Throughout the last couple decades, some of the most promising defensemen more so dominated because of their physical stature. Think Aaron Ekblad. He was six foot two as a 14 year old. Most prospects around this age sit around, you know, five foot five, five foot six. Ekblad was so physically dominant that he stood out like a sore thumb. But that doesn't always translate into actual generational talent. Aaron Ekblad has been a stud, but there's also been players like Sean Day who haven't turned out so well as of yet. However, this isn't always the case. Rasmus Dahlin not only has the ability to shut down top lines, produce bone-crushing hits, but he has filled the score sheet for the entirety of his minor career. In U16, as an underager, Dahlien had an incredible 19 goals, 48 points, and 15 games. In the same season, he would transition into U18 as a triple underager, and again would put up 26 points in 18 games, while developing a great defensive game. But what is so fascinating about Dahlien is the fact that he's such an effortless talent. I recall Jack Eichel in the Spit and Chicklets Boys describing Dahlien as a player who looks like he passes out mid-stride, but somehow manages to completely embarrass and undress the other team's entire defense. I mean, look at this clip. Disgusting. But again, he can also do this. So, it was only fitting that Dahlien, as a 16-year-old defenseman, would score this goal in the SHL. Against ex-NHL players, and some players who have been playing hockey longer than Dahlien has been alive, making him the second youngest player in SHL history to score a goal. And to give you some perspective on how dominant Dahlien has always been, he's the youngest player ever in Team Sweden history to play in the World Juniors. As he dressed at 16, he's the youngest player to play in the Olympics since 1984. He's also the youngest defenseman to score a goal in the NHL since 1995. But it's not like Dahlien just plays in these tournaments, he has always been that impact player. Which is also why he was the clear number one choice in the 2018 NHL Draft. And today, Dahlien has been a stud. He's had a consistent overall game and has demonstrated a far more efficient power play quarterback role this past season. And keep in mind, yes we hear about McCarr, Quinn Hughes, Adam Fox, but Dahlien is two, if not three years younger. He has a lot of development left and has the potential to be a scary player. In my first video on this topic, we discussed the amazing talent that is Aito Aguchi. But there's another Japanese phenom coming up in the system. Yusaku Ando. In the history of the NHL, there has been one player to play an NHL game from Japan which was Yutaka Fukafuji, as he had played four career games in 2006 for the LA Kings. And yes, we have seen some players with Japanese heritage like the Suzuki brothers, but there's one major difference in that they were born and raised in Canada. And even though someone like Aito Aguchi has set the nation on fire with the silky mixtapes, Yusaku Ando is currently claiming the title as the best Japanese talent in his generation. Japan has some issues. In recent times, they've struggled to maintain a consistent infrastructure, while some leagues only playing a couple games a month. So when you compare that to North America, I mean, even myself, I was on the ice sometimes seven days a week. So in Japan, development can be a struggle. But after being head and shoulders above the competition, Ando at the age of 13, after being identified as that generational talent from Japan, he would have to make the decision to uproot his entire life to try to become the first regular Japanese NHL player in history. And shockingly, upon arrival, Ando would prove to be no joke. 
he would join the pursuit of excellence, and as an underager, he would put up 22 goals, 36 points in 20 games. He would then get drafted to the USHL, where he would have a great rookie campaign with 25 points, which would ultimately land him an NCAA offer with Minnesota State. And as it stands, Ando is ranked in the top 100 by some scouts for the 2021 draft. He is a bit undersized standing in at 5'8", but he has elite hockey IQ and great puck skills. And with the right resources in North America, Ando could be special. And it will be spectacular if Ando can start the rise of Japanese hockey. But anyways guys, can you name a child prodigy? Comment down below, I'd love to know. And as this year wraps up, this crazy weird year, I wanted to really just thank you guys, take a moment here. 2020 has been just a, a crazy year. I came to this year with a goal of 5,000 subscribers and somehow we are coming close to 40,000, which on, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it, it just blows my mind. Now I haven't really talked about it with you guys, but when all this stuff first happened at the beginning of the year, I actually really struggled with it because it was very just overwhelming. Almost exactly one year ago, I uploaded my Elvis Pedersen video, which is actually still my most popular video to date, which is crazy because you know, that's when things kind of just all started changing on my channel and just development. But again, I really can't thank you guys enough for staying on this ride. Um, this entire year, I've been working nearly 70, 80 hours per week. I have another job. YouTube has become a 40 hour a week job for me. On top of attending university full time, it has just been insane. And without all you guys' support, I really, I'm not even joking, I couldn't have done it without your support. But, cheers to hopefully a better 2021. Let's keep the grind going. Guys, support has just been insane. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers. I think we just hit 3,800, just crazy guys.